So today I'm filming the rest of the reveal video for the 765 LT. It's definitely been a lot of fun putting this video together, but we're about to go do uh, like a full walk around. I honestly didn't drive the car much yesterday when I picked it up. I already had had dinner plans and honestly didn't expect to buy the car yesterday. But now I get to go have some fun filming, getting rollers, flyby shots, exhaust clips, literally everything, and then a full walk around explaining all the details of this spec because this is just the sexiest thing ever. And it looks so good next to the GT3. So yeah, let's uh, get on the road and have some fun. All right, what's up guys? I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of this car had two things wrong with it. The one thing option wise that I was really holding out for that this doesn't have is the factory roof scoop. From a value perspective, uh, those are gonna hold their value much better and I think they're just gangster. Uh, and the second thing with this vehicle, little high on mileage. Not much, it's not even close to the highest mileage ones on the market, um, but I drive the piss out of my car so it's gonna get there. <laughs> Thanks for letting me drive it. Yeah, of course. All righty, now it's time to grab some Chipotle on the way to my buddy's house to do some work. Let's get this going. So if you're new to the channel, you might not know this, but like my business is e-commerce, right? We sell a lot of stuff online, but that's never really been on Amazon. So that's like a new venture for me. And uh, me and a friend are kind of tackling that together. So we bounced the ideas off each other. I bought a couple training programs, hired a consultant. So good to learn with someone. All right, now one fun fact about, I guess all McLarens, actually that's a total lie, it's not a fun fact. A terrible fact is they don't do glove boxes at all, which, okay, like annoying for your paperwork, but this car is so compact, there's nowhere to put a second amendment. You know, I'm gonna have to get a magnet mount and do it under the driver's seat, which I've done once, but it's kind of in the way of my knees because I'm pretty tall, so I don't know, we'll figure that out. accidentally scared a couple of kids on the sidewalk. That was my bad. All right, check out how this garage looks with all these hex lights up on top. Just hanging out here at Noah's house. I was uh, checking out the new beef brisket bowl from Chipotle. Gas. And uh, this thing just looks unreal under the lights. What you think about it under the hex lights? It looks very good. Everything looks good under the hex lights, but the hex lights look good on above this. So. Yeah, we've actually discovered a scratch or two. Right up here on the top, there is a, a little scratch kind of runs the length here, just like maybe eight inches. Eh, it's not too bad, but anyways, the whole car is, uh, is PPF'd, which is nice. Um, the PPF's in pretty good condition, tires are healthy, so we're chilling. All right, so I did this in the GT3 while it was still at the dealership when I bought it. You gotta see if you can fit in the front. Oh God, all right, close it. I'm too fat. But yeah, this is, uh, is super awesome. I got to finish the hex lights in my garage. I only put up one side. It was a lot of effort, but yeah, just with these doors up. Mm -mm -mm. Sugar, sugar. Noah goes, did you see the curb damage on the back? I didn't. Oh. That'll, that'll buff out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice that. It's not noticeable on the car. Like Nothing a little duct tape and WD-40 can't fix. Why? Why these expensive hunks of metal that are impossible to get out of. Oh my gosh. It's a great question. Um, the point of this video is to explain something that I think will resonate perfectly with a few people and then nobody else is gonna understand. So my goal is to make everybody understand at least a little bit. Um, everybody has their thing. I've never met a person without a thing. For some people it's boats, for some it's watches, for some it's cars, for some it's you know, mountain biking. It doesn't matter what the thing is. Everybody has a thing. Some people have multiple things. One of the things, and this often has to do with how you grew up, people you're around. My family was big into cars. Got a grandpa into cars, my brother very much so into cars, and just a lot of people I grew up around. Now, the type of cars that I'm into is kind of interesting, uh, mostly exotics and then like well-restored classics, um, which I haven't ventured into much yet. But basically, I started being interested in cars, putting posters on the wall when I was young. And to me, it just was a sense of freedom, you know, being able to hit the open road and just moving through the gears, the sound you know, how different cars sound, that always grabbed me. And I used that, uh, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I used that as an excuse, a reason, a motivation, whatever you wanna call it, to make money. 
car's making a weird sound. Um, and I'll tell you what, at times when I was early in my business stage, whatever, 15, 16, trying to figure stuff out before I ever made any real money, there was times where like it, it would have been very easy to stop and give up. And it was the very direct, like again, unashamed to say it, very direct material stuff where I was like, damn, like I, I just like to experience that. You know, I didn't grow up in a place that had nice cars. You never saw it ever. And so it was always like a crazy wow factor to me. And you know what though? Using, you know, materialistic stuff or like the idea of like I'd love to go on a vacation to, you know, the Bahamas or whatever as an inspiration to work the extra two hours each day, right? Whatever the thing is you can attach to, do it because that is the reason that I got to where I am, right? It might not be the only reason who will ever really know, but it helped push me and build the discipline so that now I can work like a machine, like a robot. The feelings don't necessarily have to matter. I get the job done, right? It's kind of forged me into who I am. Now, as for talking about the vehicles specifically, I started buying cars when I was 17. Uh, but my first uh, vehicle is BMW M4, is $56,000. And I fell in love with that car. I had that thing for five years. I still regret selling it, put 50,000 miles on it. Um, you know, the next year I bought my like first entry level dream car that I'd always admired, which was a Lamborghini Huracan. Again, a cash purchase. You'll see that as a recurring theme here. Now, I haven't bought all my cars in cash, um, but the vast majority, yes. And the reason that I, I want to talk about cars, especially to a business type of audience here, is because I see a lot of people, especially in the e-commerce space that attracts younger people, make a little bit of money, right? They get up, you know, 200 grand in their business, they, the business profited 70, and they think, yo, I just made 70. No, you didn't. Your business brought in 70 that it can keep and needs to use to grow, to hire, to expand, to test, to learn. That's the difference. You also need cash reserves. Then there's the conversation of you as an entity, your personal salary, your distribution. I did not pay myself a ton for a long time. And I'm just gonna give you some ratios here just to provide some context because I think it'll help somebody. When I say that I bought a car at 17 that was $56,000, every single month I was making roughly right about that money or a little bit more. It was like 50 to 70,000 a month in profit for the business at the time. And then I waited a year and a half, I was almost 19, it was like two months before my 19th birthday when I bought the Lambo, right? And during that time I was making six figures a month, right, for the business. I wasn't taking all that out personally, but I, I say that to, to explain the ratio there, right? You know, if you make 110 grand in the year, you don't spend 80 on a car. That's, that just doesn't make sense. And so I say that because I feel like a lot of people make a step to get into something they want. Could be a mountain bike, could be a Rolex, could be a trip, could be a car, whatever. And it actually stunts their long-term growth. So by getting the thing that they always wanted long-term that they want for the rest of their life, like I want to own cool cars for the rest of my life. I'd love to build a collection. But what I refuse to do is allow, allow myself to have jumping into a car actually stunt that growth, right? I'm not going to let one car or something stop the long-term goal of as many cars as I want. And so that's how I've always thought about it. So make sure your business is healthy. You know, you're personally healthy financially beforehand. Um, I just think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Now, as for the cars, we've obviously got this sexy beauty here during sunset. Uh, this is one of, I think, three or four vehicles that I did not pay cash for. Uh, the reason is, number one, the amount. I'm not sitting on a ton, ton of cash right now in the cash that I am sitting on. Um, I could have bought a car in cash, but I need that for the business for quarter four. We're sitting on cash, we need it, we're doing a lot of campaigns, we're growing the e-commerce company, so it just made sense. Um, I think I've owned 15 or 16 vehicles, I'd have to count, and I've financed four. I think that's, that's the number. And so for me, it's just been the ratio. Um, I keep things really conservative. I don't like you know, my personal expenses to be even close to a high percentage of my income, so it's pretty chill. But um, yeah, I, I wanna point one thing out real quick. The cars are a really cool thing, and, and I get a lot out of it. I just enjoy it, like shifting through the gears again. Like it, it kind of means something to me. I understand that some people won't get that. But what it does for other people has been huge. And there's a selfish element to that too. Like I love being the person that can share the experience with somebody. But when I tell you that, sorry police, I hit 120 miles an hour in a 45 yesterday because I did a U-turn illegally and sped up to catch up to a kid who was freaking out taking a video. I'll put up a clip in a second. And I offered him a ride in the car. He was freaking out taking videos. Super nice kid, maybe 17 years old. <laughs> Right, the experience that I can provide to others, right, that I never got, you know, I feel like that's where it's a little more impactful. Now, this car especially catches more eyes than anything I've ever had times 10. Um, but just everybody smile, their looks, their, their camera, you know, some people drive dangerously because of that, but like, it just seems to brighten people's day. 
and you can do fun stuff. We've done the children's hospitals. You know, I really want to do a trunk or treat, like bring like 30 cars to a you know, local parking lot, have a bunch of kids, like do trick or treating out of the cars. Like just fun stuff. You know, I've been able to integrate it. And I feel like there's a, a big element of the car community that really does care about giving back and the experiences to others and just having fun. Like they're, they're not, you know, all douchebags. They just, they like to, they like to enjoy their cars, experience it and share it with others. Like just, just like anything. Now, because I know some of you clicked on here for the specific financials, let me give you some details. The insurance on this car, ridiculous, uh, is $1,150 a month. Now, the most I've ever paid for insurance on a car was my Huracan when I was 18. State Farm quoted me at $2,500 a month. And I paid that. Um, again, at the time, like, I just, that was a lot of money. I knew that I wasn't going to stay there, but I paid that for four months until I was able to find a much better quote. And I got it down to about $1,100 a month. This vehicle is obviously worth a little more than double what I paid for the Huracan. I do believe I'll be able to get this to seven or 800, but a couple hundred dollars a month is, is not going to make or break the car, but I do like it for it to be reasonable. Now I also own a GT3 RS. Uh, that GT3 RS insurance payment is five, I want to say 500 or 450, something around there. Uh, and then my Tesla, which is, this is way overpriced, uh, the most ridiculous one, is $330 a month for the Tesla, which is listed as the primary on the policy. So those are the cars I currently have. Just got rid of the R8, uh, looking to get in another M4, but who knows? We'll see right now. Just wait and see what goes on in quarter four with the biz. I'd like to have a little bit of dry powder to pull on if needed. So yeah, the, uh, the cars for me, I always just want to keep it in check. I, I don't like to pay a bunch of taxes on the vehicles. So when I'm buying a car from a dealership, I actually do a lease to own structure. It's just like financing. You can modify the car, take it wherever you want. There's no like uh, mileage restrictions, but there's just a balloon payment at the end. That's it. I don't intend to keep any of the cars that I buy through dealerships long term. So it makes sense to not pay 40 grand in sales tax up front. Instead, pay a few hundred dollars a month for the one year I'm keeping the vehicle, roughly, right? So that's been able to make sense. Also some other tax write-off benefits and stuff according, but I do like to own stuff in cash. You have people that are Dave Ramsey, no debt, no debt. And then you have people that are leveraged to the max, you know, use a credit card to pay your mortgage and pay it at the end of the month to then get the, like, that's just, I'm, I'm not on either of those sides. I think I'm a little more leaning on the conservative and always have. I'm definitely on the conservative side. Um, I will use debt very carefully. Never used it in the business. Very conservative on the real estate front. Uh, very conservative on vehicles and absolutely on nothing else. So that's just me. Um, everybody has their own path, nothing right or wrong, but hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Simple thing. Wanted to break it down. You know, cars have always meant a lot to me. I have, I, and I want to point this out too, as a business person who works from home, I've had an office before, but working from home, sometimes we don't get out enough. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about if you work from home. And so to me, when I can have something that's really fun to transport me to the gym, I actually go to the gym more often. I went to the gym twice today and went on a three mile walk in a really nice place up the road because I want to get out of the house and driving a car actually that's fun. It actually helps me do that more. And it might sound weird, but it's just the truth. And I can prove that because I've lived without the cars and I actually have the data to back this up. When I officially sold all of my vehicles, I was living in Puerto Rico, I held onto a car or two for a while, but I have lived with the cars for years, without for years, and now again for over a year. And I can give you direct data that I actually make less money without the cars. It might sound stupid, it might not be 100% correlated, but I think it is because it's my overall quality of life with my happiness. You know, I, I've proven that I can get rid of them and be fine without it, but it's just, there's, there's a piece of fun missing. And at the end of the day, I work my ass off for what, you know? So it's gotta have fun at, at some point. But hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I definitely post a lot more on Instagram, but I wanna do some more fun style stuff like this. This is just me talking to the camera, no script, no outline, just on how I feel about cars. You know, they've always had a special place in my life. I wanna experience a lot of them. And just uh, if anybody's curious, the decision with this was between this or a uh, Ferrari Pista, and it wasn't even close. I drove the Pista and I was very honestly upset uh, and unimpressed. I was like, dang, like, I really had hoped it would be a lot more exciting. And maybe it was the one that I drove, um, but it was not even a question. So yeah, got this car and it has been a blast. But with that being said, thanks for tuning into the video. I hope it made some sense. Maybe I look crazy, I don't know, but yeah, see ya.